Hello, now it finally happened, no I'm not slightly mad, I just uh, ran out of samples, but anyway I dig my pile of gear and I found that I didn't make uh, a review for the Tuckstar Pro 82. I bought them some time ago because it's a really popular model, really cost efficient, uh, open ba closed back headphones of course, their price is about $60 and actually Tuckstar is pretty well known as the creators of uh, really cost efficient uh, stuff, uh, mainly targeted for the professional audio, they are creating uh, inexpensive microphones, audio interfaces and of course uh, headphones for monitoring. I own their uh, Hi 2015, pretty nice um, uh, open back model, kind of rip off of the biodynamic models, but uh, Pro 82 is a bit updated version of their closed back headphones. It reminds uh, many other popular models, but I think for $60 uh, we can uh, forgive some similarity to popular models and probably for this price it can be even considered as a plus. So let's have a closer look. In terms of package, uh, nice cardboard box, a bit weird on sides, but anyway. So 40 mm dynamic driver with uh, polymer diaphragm and ergonomic design and even three levels of base adjustment. Maybe it's important for some, but some people like them because of the next feature. Because Let me do it carefully. Let's put this box aside, so inside of that plastic box you will have this kind of semi-professional case for the headphones. Of course it's not traditional hard case for the audio gear that you use sometime. It's totally plastic thing and handle is even more plastic, but at least it looks pretty attractive and actually I think you can find uh, tons of usage for such a scene besides the headphone storage. My wife, for example, already already won this thing for, you, for her uh, cosmetics organizer. And inside you will have actually headphones. And as you can probably expect, box with cable. it so short manual did they print technical specifications or no in English so information about bass boost so low frequency standard sound pressure 3 or 6 decibels of additional bass boost it's a really good thing to have in, in, in the inexpensive uh, headphones so here is kind of frequency response. As you can see even normal version is bass boosted and with the switch it boosts a, a, even a bit more. In terms of specs 32 ohms of impedance, kind of perfect load and 96 uh, decibels of sensitivity. Not super sensitive but uh, more or less acceptable even for the portable gear. You will have a traditional storage pouch and cable. Actually cable looks pretty professional. Even they've included 6.3 millimeter adapter. So as you can see accessory set is pretty good and for $60 it's almost perfect. In terms of design and build quality of course it's noticeable that uh, it's inexpensive headphones but you know Tuckstar didn't try to cut the costs where it's important so they're not trying to save every single penny so for this price this build quality is uh, really good at least to my taste and probably even better than you can expect for such price. Of course there are, uh, 
there are a lot of plastic here, but anyway, where it's necessary, they put uh, metal. So, as you can see, there is a metal in the headband, uh, where it's important to provide the proper clamping force and durability. I'm not sure is it is this band solid or it's just on the sides, but anyway, it it has a normal clamping force not uh, pushing too hard but at the same time not uh, uh, but at the same time providing a pretty good passive sound isolation there is nice clicking mechanism for adjusting the size so most probably they will fit to almost any head so as you can see they have a nice amount of retraction so even on the big head they should fit pro uh, pretty nicely so you can find the proper positions of course this part is totally plastic i'm not sure about the durability but probably it should serve uh, more or less uh, okay because there is uh, all necessary parts uh, done here and what is surprising surprised me actually outer cups are made of metal or at least covered by met metal partially so to avoid the internal cups resonance here used metal they have uh, ability to rotate flat for easy carrying on neck but they are not folding inside so it's not absolutely portable but anyway it's a normal solution for everyday usage another really pleasantly another part that really pleasantly surprised me it's a good quality of fox leather used here headband is pretty soft with nice padding and uh, with uh, nice materials so you know this uh, pleather looks uh, and feels really pleasant not sure about durability I'd rather not expect uh, some like many years durability from the inexpensive model but even if they serve for about a year buying such model once a year for me it's a, it's an okay option but of course it's just my subjective taste and also ear pads are pretty pleasant they really soft you know many more expensive models uh, suffering from more stiff ear pads so they soft they have a memory foam feeling and uh, they provide really good wearing comfort so my ears fit inside the ear pad absolutely perfectly no touching anything anywhere and it has enough depth so it also contributes to the sound isolation and to the wearing comfort so you know they are really comfortable even during the long listening sessions so it's uh, surprisingly good probably it's made for some uh, studio monitoring in case uh, you uh, didn't earn money to buy some uh, professional biodynamics or something like that but even with uh, long listening sessions they will serve you pretty nicely the only issue as usual with closed back headphones your ears will be overheating so you'll have to make a short pause like every two hours or so besides that uh, i found their comfort really satisfying here is cable connector and uh, this uh, base adjustment toggles so if you toggle them two times you can see that uh, there are two openings so this went holes changing the amount of low frequencies cable used here connects with uh, 2.5 millimeter uh, connector with four poles i'm not sure is it the same case as with oppo so could you use balanced cable here or no because uh, it's quite possible that they just used four pole connector because they don't have any other but probably it could be that they have separate wiring i'm not sure about that so i wouldn't connect them to balanced source without uh, testing stock cable is like you know it's stock cable not the softest one but uh, extremely durable i think it will serve even for longer times than headphones themselves with nice uh, isolation so not the softest one not the hardest one something in between so for inexpensive headphones i think it's a pretty solid offering in terms of cable 
and uh, actually sound isolation is good it's noticeably above average both sides so they're not playing too loud to the outside and not uh, uh, leaking too much noise inside of course it's not uh, the best in terms of sound isolation there are better models but it's noticeably above average thanks to closed back design and proper clamping force so it's a nice option to use on the street or in the office for example maybe not absolutely best uh, on the go headphones but uh, they can be served in this role pretty well and about the sound, <laughs> they require about 10 hours of burn-in, so no sense bothering burning them in on purpose, just start listening to them and they will burn in instantly <laughs> while you will be listening to them. As uh, far as I understood from other reviews over the internet, actually I really recommend you to find more reviews if you're interested. So on the head there are a few really detailed reviews, so it's probably number one. Uh, starting point so there are two versions of uh, these headphones black box and white box actually the opinions are different some say that uh, black box is version number two it has shorter cable because this one came with two meter cable and uh, some say that version two is better other people saying that version number one or white box version like uh, more uh, more engaging, detailed and so on. So anyway, my version is uh, white box one and uh, with uh, two meter cable. So I'm not sure what version is it. But anyway, keep in mind that uh, there could be some differences in sound. But anyway, they sounding really good. I rarely say so, but for $60 they are superb and even with they can compete probably with more expensive headphones maybe there are other leaders in this uh, price range but you know i really surprised i'm really surprised that they at least uh, play music for this price and uh, actually they do it well maybe not like a perfect way of course some 200 dollar models will be better Actually, for example, uh, Siren DB will be better, for example, by Centrons, but $200 is $200. For 60 bucks, uh, this one uh, is a really, really interesting option. So let's have a player on the table. As usual, it will be M11 Pro. It's my current showcase dub. And let's talk about the sound. There are three different uh, options of uh, bass boost in my in most cases i use the medium one but sometimes i change it a little bit i will show it on some ex with some examples a bit later so in terms of tuning they are v-shaped and it's a classical v-shaped tuning with accent on low frequencies and accent on the treble giving like a perfect fit for our ear frequency response so we hear uh, uh, medium frequencies best of all so based uh, low frequencies and treble compensate that fact uh, of course it's not audiophilic tuning not natural they noticeably colored but they colored in a pretty nice way and actually they're not going into too much colored version so base accented uh, amount of accent you can alter and in the mid uh, position it's like you know nicely properly boosted bass so it's like the option that uh, almost everyone will prefer with additional weight to uh, pretty nice resolution not superb but really good especially for the closed back dynamic driver of course texturing are uh, a bit um, imperfect uh, a bit imperfect uh, because uh, it's lacking a bit of refinement but anyway you know this is not headphones created for the super critical listening they are more created for enjoyment for the fun and uh, at least bass is more or less well controlled it has normal depth not the deepest one but uh, depth is present and actually it has nice uh, weight nice uh, uh, impact nice kick so all that parts of bass are present here so of course you can boost it even more in this position but in this case it's starting bleeding onto meats uh, too much for me so this is 
the best uh, possible version. But of course you can experiment and thanks to the construction of these uh, switches you can uh, easily flip the switch on the go. I'm not sure how durable it is, but probably it's okay to change it frequently. And as an example for the low frequencies I've got Juno Reactor and a track named Showtime. It's classical Juno Reactor with a lot of unusual samples with uh, good three-dimensional effects, with engaging bass line, and actually you, with these headphones you can experience this track two times. First one with bass boosted, you can even uh, flip it to the plus six decibel version, if you will enjoy like, like, like classical electronic music with punchy bass with a lot of low frequencies. And then you can flip it to the bass light version or no bass boost version, and you know it's a totally different perception of this track you will discover a lot of uh, details on the mid frequencies a lot of three-dimensional tiny three-dimensional things and special effects that june reactor put in that track and uh, it's nice experience of course this one uh, with bass boost is more engaging but sometimes try something different is a nice way mids are recessed of course uh, so they are a bit behind low frequencies and treble, but you know, not too much. Sometimes they're lacking a bit of resolution, of course, but once again, for an expensive closed back headphones, it's hard to expect something else. So, anyway, you know, it's not a critical issue for me. Uh, and I think for everyone, you know, don't expect like the performance of some open back planar magnetic headphones driven by the proper amplifier. It's just inexpensive closed back dynamic drivers and they deliver, you know, as much as they could for this price. More or less normal resolution, not too focused on the micro detailization, but uh, enough, with enough of details to uh, to represent even uh, complicated tracks like orchestral music or something like that. Of course, more natural tuning would be a plus for the orchestral music, but actually the switches partially solve this issue. And at the same time, they provide enough weight uh, to for the uh, to give instruments and voices enough of uh, weight and enough of body. Imaginary stage is a bit below average in width and in depth, but uh, it's accurate and with normal positioning, so they're not uh, sounding right between your ears. They're at least trying to build the stage, and also I think it's a really, really good result for this price. So, you know, I'm comparing them with much more expensive models often, and comparing with them, of course, they uh, lacking many things, but. Uh, Still, considering the price, you know, it looks like some kind of neat picking. And, as an example, I've got another track by Rage. I used a new album uh, of Wings of Rage in my previous review, but this time let's go back to the classics and End of All Days, uh, and uh, it's both the title of album and of the track, and it's one of the best works in the history of power metal. I really like it, uh, you know. Well, of course, it's one of the best to my taste, so... But everything that I'm saying is just to my taste. So tastes are subjective, but I really like the raw power of rage. They totally correspond to their name and they deliver enough of aggression. And of course, the vocal is also nice. Of course, guitars are lacking a bit of definition and resolution because of the V-shaped signature, but anyway, they're not totally softened and muffled like it was with one more true wireless model that I reviewed in the previous review, for example. So, and you know, surprisingly, but I prefer a bit bass boost version. It's sounding a bit uh, not natural because drums and bass guitars are become a bit boosted, but it gives you more enjoyment to the track, like uh, the case when it's sounding not absolutely natural, but uh, I'm totally okay with that. But of course, if you need uh, more resolution and focus on the mids, 
you just flip the switch and you will have less base and that automatically means more meats. And treble. Treble here is also accented uh, and uh, it's good, but of course it's good for the price, because uh, of course Tuckstar uh, tried to do their best to provide you good value. They made cups of partially made cups of metal to avoid the resonance because you know plastic cups uh, often give you a lot of uh, paras parasitic resonances on all of the frequencies and because of that bass sounding uh, poor and treble suffering even more appears a lot of um, harmonics that shouldn't be here and trebles start sounding absolutely distorted these headphones are not the case. Of course, sometimes treble here sounding a bit metallic. So, of course, it's not the most natural headphones in terms of treble. And treble extension here is not uh, the best one. So, don't expect rich layer treble of some audiophilic model. But uh, for $60 treble here is nice. They are boosted, so if you're super treble sensitive, it's better to listen them before buying. But uh, for vast majority of uh, listeners, I think it will be okay. It's like the proper amount of treble boost to compensate the low frequencies, like to balance them, to provide a bit of additional clarity. They sounding pretty crisp, a uh, bit highlighted, and this highlight on the treble is nice. It's uh, uh, like underlining uh, or highlighting uh, some percussion, highlighting female vocal and some male vocals, so you know it's like uh, a bit of added spice to the sound in, in order not to sound too dull or too claustrophobic. For example, Tuckstar had uh, what I actually don't remember the name of this model, I reviewed it a few years ago. Something like uh, two, with 2000 in model's name, they position that as DJ headphones, but they have muffled treble and powerful bass, and they sounding absolutely uh, bassy and uh, not natural. This one uh, have more treble, and because of that, they sounding maybe not 100% natural or organic, but you know, it's closer to the normal sound and uh, I can only applaud uh, Tuckstar for uh, this uh, uh, tuning, for this idea. And as an example, I will use the next track. I think nowadays we need to release this album more and more and uh, pay close attention. You know, what uh, differs the true masterpiece is that uh, even, I don't know how many, fifth, probably about 50 years since it was recorded, it's still, uh, still uh, actual and it still uh, uh, corresponds to the modern situation, so it's perfect masterpiece. And I'm not even speaking about the perfect vocal, great music and catchy tunes, but anyway, Marvin Gaye, God is Love, one of the best male vocals ever recorded. Of course, to my taste, but I, I don't think that someone can object here. And uh, of course, uh, for his vocal and for the percussion of this track, you will need some more expensive model, but these headphones uh, play really well with this uh, track, so it's surprisingly nice. In terms of pairing, actually they're not uh, too uh, power hungry, but uh, they probably won't be okay with regular smartphones, they more created for some desktop digital tonal converter or some uh, portable player with at least 100 milliwatts of power. So they require a bit of additional power, but uh, from other hand, not too much. So you know, it's a like good, uh, staple for uh, for the desktop system for the non-audiophilic person who wants to have something with good uh, price to quality ratio not like you know 500 dollar headphones and uh, like 1000 dollar digital tonal converter so just 60 dollars for these uh, headphones and something like i don't know feel case 3 for example 
or something like that, like $100 in expensive digital tonal converter and you will be done. Or like get something like Fio M11 is portable dub. Of course, for Fio M11 better headphones would be a plus, but anyway, as an inexpensive option when you're trying to save for something more high-end, it could be a really, uh, really logical solution. Speaking about the comparisons, unfortunately there won't be anyone, because I didn't have any headphones from this price segment to compare. Probably there are some uh, popular models, maybe some Audio Technica M30 or M40 for example, or some other models, but I haven't tested them, but for $60 Tuckstar Pro 82 are really good. Don't expect some audiophilia stellar uh, uh, performance, but uh, for uh, but they still they sounding pretty enjoyable, and especially for those who are not suffering from the audiophilia virus. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.